Hello St James, Mr Parslow here. I'm doing another worship for you, very excited about it. Before I get carried away, we shall do our opening candle prayer, if you will join me. Lord Jesus, we light this candle to remind us that you are here with us. Help us always to remember that you are the light of the world and help us to shine with your light throughout the days of our lives. Amen. Today we are talking about courage and how courage is a gift from God. The hope of God can fill us with courage and make us do incredible things. I'm going to tell you a story from the Bible about courage. I'll also tell you a more recent story about courage, um, well, not enormously recently, 50, 60 years ago. Um, and I want to encourage you that you can be filled with courage and hope and teach you why you can be filled with such courage. The story from the Bible I'm going to teach in my old falling apart Bible is in 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 14, and it's a story about Jonathan and his armour bearer. Now some of you will know who Jonathan is. For those of you who don't, Jonathan became um, one of David's best friends. David was a good king of Israel. He was anointed by um, Samuel to become king after Saul, who was the first king of Israel, who started good but went bad. Jonathan is Saul's son. Um, and in this period of time, they're fighting the Philistines quite a lot. This is the Philistines were who Goliath was involved with. Um, and Jonathan acts courageously, trusting in God to protect him so that he can stand against the Philistines. I shall read the story to you and then we'll explain it a little bit. One day, Jonathan said to the young man who carried his weapons, let's go across to the Philistine camp. But Jonathan did not tell his father Saul, who was camping under a pomegranate tree in Migron, not far from Gabir. He had about 600 men with him. The priest carrying the ephod was Ahijah, the son of Ichabod's brother Ahidub, who was the son of Phinehas and the grandson of Eli, the priest of the Lord in Shiloh. The men did not know that Jonathan had left. Uh, an ephod was just a sign to show that this is a person a priest. It's not enormously important. Um, in the pass of Michmash, which Jonathan had had to go through to get over to the Philistine camp, there were two large jagged rocks, one on each side of the pass. One was called Bozes and the other Senna. One was in the north side of the pass facing Michmash, Michmash and the other was on the south face, side facing Geba. Jonathan said to the young man, Let's cross over to the camp of those heathen Philistines. Maybe the Lord will help us. If he does, nothing can keep him from giving us the victory, no matter how few of us there are. The young man answered, Whatever you want to do, I am with you all the way. All right, Jonathan said. We will go across and let the Philistines see us. If they tell us to wait for them to come to us, then we will stay where we are. But if they tell us to go to them... Then we will, because that will be the sign that the Lord has given us victory over them. So they let the Philistines see them. And the Philistines said, Look, some Hebrews have coming out of the holes that they've been hiding in. Then they called down to Jonathan and the young man, Come on up here, we have something to tell you. Jonathan said to the young man, Follow me, the Lord has given Israel victory over them. Jonathan climbed up out of the pass on his hands and knees, and the young man followed him. Jonathan attacked the Philistines and knocked them down, and the young man killed them. In the first slaughter, Jonathan and the young man killed about 20 men in an area of about a quarter of a hectare. All the Philistines in the countryside were terrified. The raiders and the soldiers in the camp trembled with fear. The earth shook, and there was great panic. It's a story about two men going off and fighting. Now, obviously, our own courage doesn't usually involve fighting a bunch of invading Philistines, because... That's not the situation we live in, but it is courage of them taking on something much greater than themselves. The two men fought and defeated 20 other men. It's something that's very tricky. We only see it in movies. It doesn't really happen in real life, not very often. But it's interesting what Jonathan says. He says, if the Lord has decided to put the Philistines into, their ha into our hands, there is nothing that they can do to stop that. He had absolute and complete trust in the strength that God would give him to defeat the enemies of God. And back then, when this is Old Testament times, and, and Jesus, uh, God was connected to the Israelites. They were his special people set apart for him. 
And so they were his people and the Philistines were essentially the enemies of God because they were standing against the Israelites. Obviously, with the new covenant, things are different, but it still shows that 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 heart of God to protect his people, to help his people overcome impossible things has always been the case and always will be the case. We've got to have a willingness sometimes to try things that are risky. You won't be expected to go and fight 20 men. That's not the risky things that you've got. But there are risky things in your life as well. Perhaps there is a um, difficult conversation that you don't want to get to that might get you in trouble. But you know it is the right thing and God can help you do it. Or maybe there is, um, maybe for some of you who are older and the year sixes are thinking about going into new schools, you've got to think about how you're going to approach those schools, those teachers and those new friends that you're going to have. There are risks involved in that, but you can have courage that you're going to overcome things. You can make the friendship groups that you need to. and You don't need to stick to what seems safe. You can do the things that are braver, that you can spend time with the people who are less cool. You don't need to worry about that kind of thing. For the adults who are watching it, there are many parents at home here who are also in a situation where they need to be brave. The whole world is a bit crazy at the moment, and sometimes you're going to do things that are not comfortable and not easy and this is the time when you can show willingness you know that if it is good for you to do and if god has decided that's what's going to happen for you then you will be victorious and that's a great encouragement for us to have some courage and bravery the next story i want to tell you is slightly more recent it is a story about a woman called elizabeth elliot she um, was born almost uh, well, over 100 years ago now, and she was a missionary. Uh, she went as a missionary to Ecuador, which is, um, I don't actually know, that's embarrassing. I should have looked that up before I said, but she went as a missionary to Ecuador. She got married while she was there and they had a child um, and she worked really hard. A missionary is someone who goes and works for God amongst another, a, another culture, another group. And that's what she did. She would teach them and she helped teach in schools and she helped work in, um, in doing medical care because they didn't have enormous resources. Um, and she also spoke about God. That was her job. That's what she did. But in 1956, her husband went to another tribe in Ecuador where um, he and, and a few other missionaries, four other missionaries went to go and speak to them and try and move out their, the mission work to another group. But they were all martyred. To be martyred means to be killed for what you believe. The tribe that they went to didn't want them to be speaking about it. And so they killed uh, Elizabeth's husband and, and four of the others. And this might be a terrifying thing. And you think, oh, Elizabeth and her, her, her younger, a young daughter, who'd only just been born by this point, would have probably gone back to America, that's where she was from, and run away from the place because it was dangerous and there were people there who tried to, who had killed her husband, who were not thinking well of her. But she was brave instead. She was filled with God's compassion for these people that she was with and she continued with the tribe that she was in for two more years. But most remarkably of all, when her daughter was about three years old, uh, she and uh, a lady called Rachel Nate, no, Rachel Saint, um, who was wife of another one of the missionaries who'd been killed, decided that they wanted to speak to this tribe. They still wanted to do the work that their husbands had died trying to do. And imagine the fear that they must have felt as they walked towards that tribe with her tiny daughter and, and this uh, this other lady, just two two women and a young girl, a three-year-old girl, went to a tribe that had only a couple of years earlier, killed their husbands and a few others. They must have been terrified, absolutely uh, shook to the core. They might not have even particularly wanted to go, but they had prayed and they had thought about it. And for two years, they had been convicted by God that these people were still in need of God's love and, and, and of, of Elizabeth Elliot's love as well. And it was her duty to, to not hate and be angry, but instead to, to um, forgive and to go forwards and to spend time with these people. And she did. She went and went to join this tribe, which I'll probably pronounce wrong, but it's written here as 
Huaroni? Huaroni? I don't know. Someone else. Uh, you, you can look it up, I suppose. She went and spent five years serving with them, and her and her daughter and, and Rachel, and they spent five years working with this tribe that had only just recently killed her husband. It must have been terrifying. It must have been one of the worst slash best experiences of her life, but she served well and admirably, and she worked with them really, really hard and really, really well. She learned their language. She learned how to communicate with them. She built a group of women in the community who could help um, serve the, the people in there to do um, teaching, to educate the children, to, to teach literacy and foreign languages, to, to speak about um, God's truth. And she had a lot of opposition while she was there. Thankfully, she wasn't martyred, nor was her friend or daughter. Uh, and five years of serving these people who had killed his her husband. It took a lot of faith and a lot of courage. She did return to America uh, when her daughter was a little bit older for her daughter's education. And uh, but she continued to work as a missionary and, and speaking on the radio and even on television until she reti retired ju just under 20 years ago. And she passed away about five years ago. But that is one courageous lady, and she's a bit more up to date with times which you guys will know. Obviously, none of us were born 100 years ago, but, I mean, five years ago she was still alive. 20 years ago she was talking on the radio. She's not that long ago, but she's still filled with that same courage. She knew, like Jonathan knew, that if God wanted to get something done, it would be done, and she would be safe. And, and her husband knew this as well when he went out. He knew that God wanted this to be done and he took a risk and he accepted it. A martyr is someone who's died for their faith. He accepted his death. That was what needed to be done so that they could come to understand and know more about God. Without his death, his wife would never have been able to work with them. That takes courage, sometimes loss. It's an amazing amount of faith and hope that they have, that they know that God will do great things that they know great things will come. And that's what I expect and what we all expect from you. Not all of you, of course, believe in God, but that's not the entire point. Those of you who do, great. Take that hope, that excitement, that assurance to do incredible things. But regardless, we know you can do good things and you know you can do good things. You've done good things throughout your whole time in St. James and you'll continue to do good things when you move on from St. James if you're the older ones going on to new schools. You should do good work. And sometimes that'll take risks. And I'm really excited to hear about them. If you can give encouragement to other people to take those risks and do brave things, that's great. But right now, think about and concentrate on the good things that you know can have happened in your life and can happen. The friendships you have, the support you have, the blessings you have. Think about how much we've always told you about how much God loves you and how he wants to help you. And use that to do something really, really brave. To keep doing things that you might think are super hard. I think I'll wrap that up for now. That's what I want you to do. I want you to think about that courage. The song that we're going to put on the end is a song called Be Brave, Be Strong. And it's obviously, it's very short, but it's catchy. And those words by themselves show you show you why I've picked it. But there's also a word in the in the verse of it that says um, that perhaps you've been put here for such a time as this. It's from the book of Esther. And it says that maybe just because there are things going badly, that, that doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad thing. Maybe that's why we're here, so that we can help. So you have that courage, and when you listen to this song, you think, yeah, maybe I have been put here for such a time as this. Thank you very much for listening. Um, I look forward to seeing you all next week. Well, you seeing me next week. I don't get to see you, unfortunately. Um, and let me finish with our closing candle prayer. May the brightness of God be with you. May the lightness of God be with you. May he smile on all you do. God bless you. Amen.